Shinedown emerged onto the rock scene in 2001, hailing from Jacksonville, Florida. Led by the dynamic vocals of frontman Brent Smith, the band quickly garnered attention with their debut album, Leave a Whisper, in 2003. But it wasn't until their 2008 breakout album, The Sound of Madness, that truly propelled them into the mainstream. This is the Spout Podcast, where famous people spout off about more than what they're famous for. And today, that's Shinedown. The Brent Smith Shinedown, man. Uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with that, man. A day that is very work intensive, but isn't your usual work. You know, you're not doing the concerts, you're not doing the tour, you're not writing. How are you continuing to stay in that positive mentality? And, and what do you do maybe when you hit that noon slump to like, okay, I need to keep going. Um, honestly, man, I, I just keep myself in check that I am doing what I love uh, more than anything in the world. And, you know, what we're doing in the band right now, uh, there's a lot of new people kind of finding out who we are as a band. So yeah. it's really exciting that there's more people that want to talk to us about who we are. Um, you know, what's going on with this song currently? What's going on, you know, with this band of the last 20 years? Uh, and what the next 20 years is for us. So I just stay motivated by the interest that people have in what we're doing and try to learn from that and have great conversations and yeah. just stay motivated that I get to do what I love for a living. Let's let's zero in on that then, because as insane as it is, 20 years into a very successful career, by the way, uh, people are just discovering Shinedown. You know, they're hearing a symptom of being human for the first time because it's on pop radio. It's a hot ADC or, or, you know, it's just playing in a, a Kmart or that's not a thing anymore. That's a bad example. But like a CVS, There's a right? There's a couple there, of there's still a few that left. blue light special comes around every few years. <laughs> But you get what I'm saying, right? They're they're getting introduced or introduced to this, and now we live in a world where music and, and genres are much more fluid than they used to be. You can yeah. just type in "Shine Down" symptom of being human, and then it's going to play, you know, uh, "Sound of Madness." It's going to play "Devil." It's going to play "Simple Man." You're going to hear a lot of different things. So for yeah. someone that is diving in and going, "Wow, uh, not a band I ever thought I would listen to, but I'm into it." What's like the Brent Smith approved binging technique? Where, where should we go from there when we look back at the catalog that is Shinedown? Well, the one thing is about us is, is this. First of all, for us, age is just a number. And, you know, we're very, we're honored and respectful of the fact that we've had a career for two decades. But that's, that's been a part of our, our growth as an artist, too. So what I would say is just get in there and start. There's seven records. Um, but what we're doing now is our audience has always allowed us to evolve. We, we have mm -hmm. a saying in the band that we're in. We only have one boss. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. So it, you know, whether you're just kind of finding out who we are or you've been there from day one in the Shinedown community, anyone from anywhere at any time is welcomed all the time. And yeah. we don't really write music inside of a vacuum, nor do we write in a box. And what I mean by that is, to us, we're inspired by so many different styles of music and so many different types of prolific songwriters that go from all sides of the spectrum of music. We don't handcuff ourselves creatively. We never have on any record. So it's not to us about... It's not a reflection of whether it's pop music, rock music, rap music, country music, metal, however you want to look at it. It's about all music. And I think that for us, too, we've always had a way of discussing the human spirit more than anything in our songs. Mm -hmm. um, a symptom of being human is uh, being human is a prime example of that because people have asked, like, where did the song come from? And the song came from the fact that we're all a work in progress. You know, we wrote the song in the midst of a pandemic when everybody was going through an array of emotions. People were angry. They were sad. They were lonely. They were frustrated. And in a lot of ways, Symptom was a gift because it kind of utilized us as a vessel so that it could be born. And... Yeah. I think that where people find that song, it's interesting to see the nostalgia around Second Chance, too, from 15 years ago, us crossing over at that time to five different formats um, with that song. And then now, 15 years later, doing that again with a brand new song. But yeah. <clears throat> again, it's all about the human spirit. That's what Second Chance was about. That's what A Symptom of Being Human is about. But... You know, our profile is, uh, you know, basically jump in, man, bring it on, you know, just get in there. I, I love that. And, you know, Shinedown inherently is such a mentally healthy band. 
um, the lyrics and, and the storytelling, you know, when you do listen to a song uh, that people can connect with, people that may feel isolated or may feel like they might not belong to another community. Um, you go to, to records, um, you know, 20 years ago where I'm, I'm hearing these lyrics and, and at a time where to go back to what I kind of said, you know, music was a little more segregated than it is now. Uh, you know, people would see a certain quote unquote uh, generalized look of a rock band and they might get a little afraid of it. And yeah. then they were like, oh, I'm never going to listen to it. I'm never going to go to that show. Right. We don't live in that world anymore. No. Um, rock and roll I was community going... couldn't, couldn't be a more like, come on. Like, we, yeah. we, like we want you. You know what I mean? Like, again, it could not be a, a more inviting community of people. Yeah. What have you learned tips and tricks to stay mentally healthy? You know, uh, I know that's a very broad and general question, but I find that sometimes when you ask that kind of a question, it's like, okay, maybe that's something that, you know, you would think people have top of mind all the time and it's just not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can only speak for me personally, you know, um, for me, just physical fitness, about a yeah. decade ago, just you work really out. Became, I never saw yeah, that on your social. What <laughs> really like physical fitness just became a really hang on. You, you answer it, please. Hello. <laughs> they hung up on me, Eric. That's terrible. What is wrong? I'm at the Four Seasons in Los Angeles. <laughs> they hung up on me. That is terrible. That is not. That's not. Good I love that it was the most classic ringtone like in the world too. Like who I even know. has those phones Very, anymore? <laughs> Just totally sterile, neutral ring. Nothing cool at all. Anyway, right. uh, for me, physical fitness was something that back in 2010, I kind of had to make a really big decision um, because I was in really bad shape. And I was also I was having a lot of issues with substances. I have a past. So for me, um, my sobriety helped out a lot when I kind of figured out how to understand that, yo, um, when I was 30, I found out that I was going to be a father. My son is 16 now and my son saved my life in a lot of ways. Like the, when he was born, it, it really made me realize that I, it was no longer about me. Cause I said to myself, I'm no good to this beautiful little boy right. if I'm dead, you know, yeah. not to be like morbid, but it was the way I looked no. at it. So I had to like consciously understand that I had to kind of utilize the, I needed something to make me feel good because I'm all or nothing. I don't do anything like halfway. So yeah. I kind of became addicted to being physical seven days a week. I started to, you know, learn how to eat right, things of that nature. Um, but for me, you know, really that's been the saving grace for me. Just sometimes I don't want to do it. And I, I do a, um, the way that I do my fitness is I try to be in a flow state, which means seven days a week I'm doing something. That doesn't mean that I'm exercising five days a week, like three hour sessions or anything like sure. that. Some days I am, but I'm constantly moving or I'm stretching or I'm doing something physical no matter what. I try not to be like stagnant anywhere. So I, I find that movement really, really helps like my mental space. Yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that. It took me a very long time to, to realize that. And I'm certainly not the fitness uh, guru that you are. Uh, but I tried to just live by that same rule of like, move, do something, you know, every single day to the best of your ability. I yeah. did try your, your dead mills that you posted about. Uh, that is no joke. Man. No, no joke. <laughs> No uh, getting all. a treadmill to, to work without power. Not not as easy as you would be like, no, nah, I can just walk. I push it. Nope. Yeah, it's yeah, man. The thing is, too, I mean, for your for your viewers and for your listeners too, you know, you can look up a um, it's called Tabata and you can do Tabata in different ways. Um, but that's a really cool thing. Just using circuits and intervals and things of that nature. But, you know, cold showers in the morning. That is better than coffee, I will tell you. And I love coffee. It's like my last vice. But I will yeah. say, like, cold showers will, like, you're, it sounds like a, you ask yourself, like, why would I do this? Why would I actually yeah. do this to myself? Why would I walk into a, a cold shower first thing in the morning? Try it. Because uh, it, 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 it's different. Brent, I have. I've tried hard. Yeah. I I have a couple of friends uh, from our you know great North neighbors. Uh, the Canadians do it all the time. They're, they yeah. grow up walking into uh, just cold showers, and I, I I can't get behind it. I don't. It's, it's okay. so it's, it's okay. painful, man. It's all right. Know. It's all right, brother. What's okay. uh What's an o or underrated workout? You know, something maybe something simple that's like people don't know what to do in the gym. Um. 
Well, I'll tell you this. You kind of need four basic things. Yeah. Um, probably if somebody was to say to me, what is the one exercise um, if you could only do one exercise? And that was like you're on an island, but like there's a rule or whatever. Sure. It's like for the next year, you can only do one exercise. You got one. What would it yeah. be? What I would tell you would be um, a push-up. And why would it be a push-up? Well, because a push-up, you don't necessarily just have to bang them out. You can also like be in a holding position, mm -hmm. and then you're in a what is considered a uh, a standing plank. You know yeah. what I mean? A plank is a very underrated um, exercise because people go, "Well, yeah, but you're just like you're you're just you're you're still yeah." But every single muscle group is engaged. Anyone saying that hasn't done a plank long enough. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'll say. That so I would say like a plank push up squats yeah um and and sit ups man i mean honestly dude that's really all you need to be there's a theme here you don't need machines for any of these you, you don't, don't need a really, gym for man. any of these no and here's the other thing too like my whole thing is listen there's going to be people that may watch this that are in a gym right now like sure. this guy like i'm if you're training for a competition obviously you got to like yeah. there's different supplementation you need to take there's different you know eating habits all that but that's not what we're saying like i'm just saying from a functional standpoint and if you're just somebody that's like trying to think about fitness mm -hmm. and like i don't even know where to begin the best place to begin is go outside in the sunshine and start with a walk yeah. a walk is a great way to just kind of you know get things moving you know what i mean the sun Great vitamin D, you know, the best vitamin D in the, is, is usually probably from like 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning. That's when you're going to get the best vitamin D from the sun. Yeah. Um, and just getting outside and breathing fresh air um, is something that can, you can be in a bad mood and just not feeling it. If you go outside and just take a 20 minute walk, I guarantee you it will, it will change your mood quickly. The vitamin D deficiency during the winter is a very real thing. Uh, my uncle's a physician, and I actually just had this conversation with him during Easter. He's like, if more people understood that even just taking a little bit more vitamin D as a supplement during the winter when yeah. they don't have access to sunlight, he's like, people don't understand how much that impacts yeah. every aspect of your health, mental, physical, all of it. The other thing, too, is like in the winter months also, most of the people on the planet are vitamin D deficient because mm -hmm. like you're not out in the sun all the time, right. you know? Um, so the other thing too is like vitamin D three, you know, you, you kind of, I try to always year round, I'll take about 10,000 milligrams, you know, I use that's different than, um, uh, like full mil milligrams or what have you. But D three is, you know, vitamin D is probably, we are the, the most deficient in that. So, that's also, that's the building block you need for your immune system is vitamin D. Yeah. But don't hear that. I mean, don't listen to me. Go to your physician, get your blood checked. You might be, Everyone's you health is different. Blood. Check with your physician. Yeah, we're going to do the whole yeah. disclaimer. Yeah, that disclaimer. Yeah, we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're just trying to get you healthy and feeling better. That's all. All we are, we're morons, right? Yeah. I mean, we're just knuckleheads. Don't listen to us. What are, uh, what are you doing when you're on tour and you're like, I just need something healthy and all I have access to is a gas station convenience store? What are like the three pillars of, I, I still want to be on the healthier side of things, but I have a very limited resource uh, of what I'm able to eat and consume right now. What's like maybe that little bit of vice, but you're still trying to be healthy. Maybe it's a banana flavored thing and you're like, I know this isn't banana, but whatever. The, the the really interesting thing now, man, is a lot of gas stations and a lot of like, I mean, uh, you can get, you can find fruit and a salad it's different. and, it's and different. a lot of them now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, but my thing would be this, um, you're never going to go wrong with cashews. That's mm. always going to, yeah, that's always going to be. Someone something. has a nut allergy hearing this and they're like, yeah, cool. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate right. that. If you don't but have assuming a nut allergy, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Assuming you don't have a nut allergy. Yeah. Um, here's the other thing, too. Dude, I, I grew up in the late 70s, early 80s, and I'm sure I had all kinds of allergies. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I was deficient and everything like that. My mom and dad, God bless them, like they pushed me out into traffic. They were like, go outside. <laughs> like, you're gonna have It'll to make just, you tougher. Yes. Like, you're just going to have to deal with it, dude. Like, yeah. you know, my my tongue is itchy when I eat this. It's not my fault. What is it? It's just peanut butter. I don't know. Dude, the first time I realized that your tongue being itchy is an allergy, I was like 27. I was way too late in life to be like, wait, yeah. maybe I'm allergic and by to that, that. By that point, your body's already built the immunity up. Yeah.
You know what yeah. I mean? But to, 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 I mean, from a more like a lot of times you can get fruit, you can get a salad in a, in mm-hmm. a gas station nowadays. I mean, man, the, the way I look at it is there's always going to be bottled water. So you got mm-hmm. that, you know, um, you know, it, it's cool to see, you know, a lot of times like, you know, you can get, you know, hard boiled eggs that are there. I know some people are like, this guy's disgusting. You trust a hard boiled egg at a gas station? If it's in a package, yeah. Okay. It's, All it's, right. Okay. It's got an expiration date. That's a hot take, date. man. <laughs> it's got an expiration date. That that helps out too. What I would tell you is this do not get anything from a gas station that is under a hot bar. That is going to be hours and hours of indigestion. I don't bad news. Bar. Do not do not it's not worth it. Do not get anything from that hot bar because all it's gonna do is just it's gonna just erode your esophagus. Yeah. Bringing the uh, the fitness conversation back to music a little bit. You know, we were talking about obviously this fitness advice you just gave is it maybe someone that's just when you strip it all back, you got four mm-hmm. fundamentals and music's very similar too. Of course, yeah. you have rock shows, you have pyro, you have amplification, but at the end of the day, all you need is your voice or just, you know, a beat and you can keep music too. Um I want to hear you I've heard a little bit of it of what you've posted, but your granny Will's wisdom uh of your grandmother sharing her thoughts on never arriving. Yeah. Talk to me about that for a second. Yeah, so my granny, which is my mother's mother, um, you know, my dad was a big influence growing up. But in a lot of ways, I was raised by these two very, very strong women, uh, my mom and my granny. My granny always just told me she was like, look, the key to success is to never arrive. You know, like there's always another gear. There's always Mm -hmm. another level. There's always another mountain to climb. And her whole thing was always like climb the mountain to the top. It's not about conquering the mountain. It's about climbing that mountain and then finding if you're ready for another challenge go find a bigger mountain so it was always about learning from that you know involving yourself in the experience being a witness to everything around you and being present and listening to people being understanding of the fact that you know you want to lead by example but you also want to lead you know lead from the front Sure. And try to surround yourself with like-minded people. So, and then the other side of that too, some of the best advice I ever got was from my mother. My mom, I remember when I was probably like 14, 15 years old, she goes, let me show you how to shake. She was like, I want to show you how to shake someone's hand. So if, if, if you're in front of a man, you know, I want you to, this is how you shake a man's hand. And so she mm-hmm. shook my hand and she's like, all right, now this is how you shake a woman's hand. And we shook hands and I got like, yeah, but 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 you shake they're they're the same. And she goes, Exactly. Remember wow. everyone's the same. Like you yeah. have to treat treat it, get put everybody at the level that you would want to be treated at, no matter the gender, no matter where they come from. Belief. It doesn't matter. My mom was always like, It doesn't matter if you're younger, whether you're older, whether you're a man or a woman, the color of your skin, that's irrelevant. Your religion, that's who you are as an individual. Respect that person's wow. right to have that opinion, to have that love, and understand that they are an individual. Be receptive to everyone and find the good in everyone. That is a message, obviously, I think a lot of us have heard several times, but that analogy, that handshake analogy, that's, wow. Yeah. Your mom's kind of smart, man. <laughs> that, it's right, that one, is, one of the most profound things anyone's ever said to me. You know, just how you that's going to stick hand, with cool. me. That's how you shake a woman's hand. Yeah, but they're the same. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, taking it back to things a little more recent now, you, you recently came off um, you know, the iHeartRadio Music Awards. You got to yep. catch up with a bunch of people on the carpet there. You introduced mm-hmm. Jelly Roll, part of the Mutual crazy. Admiration Club. Yeah, Would we ever see a Jelly Roll collab with Shinedown? 100%. It might be in the works. I mean, I don't know what I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> you never know. This is something that I just get to clip out if and when it happens. I'll be like, see, I told you. They're like, Eric, that was three years ago. But it's like he told me. It was an exclusive. No, we're pretty quick. If I say it, it's probably gonna happen. <laughs> All right. I'll, t- I'll take that wink wink. No, uh, man, I also we just, saw we we just have a mutual love for one another and just care so deeply about who he is as an individual and his story. And mm-hmm. you know, he has been um getting ready. Everything that is happening in his life, people need to understand that it did not happen overnight. This man is the real thing on so many different levels. Could not be a more genuine individual, talented as all get out. And, you know, 
I think the it's more the when I see his success and I remember when you know we brought him out with us in 2022 on tour there were people that were like who is why like what is going on here who is this and I'm like just get ready man cuz yeah. it's it it it's not an if it's a when it's it's he's just I told him too I said man you are about to to get into the most amazing rocket ship that only you can captain you know yeah. what i mean and he is in his element this is what he was born to do it is his time it is his moment and you're going to see for years to come i'm so man dude i'm gonna tell you right now what is necessary in life jelly roll is necessary i'm so proud of that guy and i love his success and i love watching it and you know the world needs more people with that open mindedness that he has mm -hmm. and again how we look at things too in the band that I'm in in Shine Down again it's not about borders it's not about you know following a lane or a trajectory or any of that it's about understanding that we can all develop together and you're allowed to evolve yeah speaking of that's a that's a great tie in evolve music video just came out Jason Bourne of a music video too, the visuals for Shine Down. Uh, to go off of what you're just saying, and not to completely ignore it. Obviously, you know the message of Jelly Roll as a person, uh, but also you're being extremely humble. I mean, just you know, if you want to follow Brent Smith on Instagram, you're gonna get the best motivation you've ever needed, man. I promise you. Uh, but we, you know, we're still putting out new music. We're putting out new visuals and whatnot. Uh, yeah. When you strip it all back, the messaging is there. Um, it's it's inclusive. It's important. It's mentally healthy, like I said at the beginning of the interview. But just give me like the, the 60 seconds to talk about the rock star moment for a second because we do create visuals now that are cool, right? You can't come up with a song like Pyro and not have an insane amount of fire in the video and on stage. Yeah. Now that you guys are in the position you're in and, you know, continuing to, I know that we have some festival shows coming up over the summer. Yeah. Uh, are we at a place where people really say no anymore? Like, no, Brent, scale it back. You know, or can we go a little bit bigger than we've ever gone? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. I mean, th I'm having the most fun right now with the fact that we're like, it's cool that these other formats are finally like, maybe because I just wore them out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they finally over, added the song. Yeah. Over time, I just had to like, I just politely knocking on the door. Can I come in now? You know, yeah. can we, how about now? And yeah. then finally, I was like, look, I'm coming in. Like, we got to get like, just let's let us let's sit down. Let's break some bread. You know, let's get into it. Um, we try not to have any kind of boundaries when it comes to the visual. Obviously, you know, the interesting thing is that there's going to be some announcements that are coming in the near future quite soon, actually. Yeah. Um, where uh, we're actually being invited out at this moment in time this summer to a lot of pop festivals where you know they're asking us to come in but it's like well they almost are weird not weird that's not the thing it's it's strange to them that they're coming to us going yeah but like the way you would be positioned is in front of this person or this and that and it's only like a 30 minute set and we're like yeah. we're down let's go you know what i mean so just like, for context i saw you're on a bill in boston with doja cat so there's yeah. an example right there right yeah today it went out like uh huge pop station in in boston mm -hmm. uh jason deluro um I didn't, Knox I didn't, is on that show buddy yeah. of mine great artist too yeah Knox is on there um yeah. you know obviously doja cat and they came to us and they were like would you be into this and they're playing symptom and we're like hell yes you're like you absolutely, absolutely we would be into it you know it's cool too sometimes because if you're doing shows like that where you're in kind of like daylight we're not necessarily getting the evening part of things like that the band can be its own pyro too sure you know what i mean but for the stuff that we do and like when we're doing headline shows and when we're putting shows together i give a lot of credit to zach um with the shows um he has a lot to do with the visual aspects of what we do live um, but yeah, man, we're, we're not showing up to, um, we're, we're known as a band that's quite animated live too. Uh, so there's a lot of energy. But that's, that's an understatement, by the way, if you've never seen a live performance of Shine Down or a video of one of those, by the way, that's a great, can think of it as a, a caffeinated pill that wakes you up a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, a hard boiled egg from a gas station. If you that's will. what we are. Shine Down, the hard boiled egg. Of the music industry. There's my Peabody right yeah, there. there. Yes, by go. comparing right. someone I'm interviewing. I love it. I'm totally down. No, man, but it's uh, here's the other thing, too, man. We're a fan of production. We're a fan of theater. We're a fan of like 
we're a fan of like giving the audience a performance, a give show. them a show. You know what I mean? So there is an element there of spectacle and wow that we want people, you know, again, eight to 80, you know, anyone's welcome. So it's like you, you know, sometimes you can show up and it just needs to be the band and you don't necessarily need the production, you know, depending on what the situation is. But mm -hmm. yeah, man, if we're going to the arena or we're going to a stadium or we're doing a big festival and we're headlining, uh, we're probably not going to show up with just a backdrop and a park and a couple of park right. bands. Yeah. Like I said, you can't have a song called Pyro and not fire on stage. Like that's kinda, just kind of, I think that's illegal. With it. Yeah. Uh, Brent Smith, you've been so courteous with your time, man. Shine down the record, a symptom of being human. Been out for over a year and still getting added to stations, making yeah. number one uh, record breaks across, you know, the board of music. Wow. I, I, it's crazy, man. It's and it's cool to have a record. I can only imagine that's continuously for this long still gaining speed. Yeah, uh, I talked to Dave Bailey of Glass Animals. They had a similar run with Heat Wave a couple of years yeah. ago, and it's just got to be one of the coolest things in the world, man. Because it's just it's you're still releasing new things. You're working on your new stuff. You're going on the road, but you still have constant uh, discovery from this thing that you put out. You know, twelve plus months ago. Yeah, and again, too. You know, we're a band that was. Uh, that not only respects, but was built by the radio. Um, and then obviously with streaming, you know, that is an experience where you want as many people to know about your music as possible. But I got to give a lot of credit to, you know, the, the understanding that there's 8 billion people on this planet. You know what I mean? Not everybody knows who Shinedown is. Yeah. So there's a patience involved in it at times, but we live in a very technologically advanced um, era in human history where you really can get your music out there. Um, but because there's so much music, getting people's attention is something that can be difficult to do at times. But what we've done over the course of our career and what we'll continue to do is We've never once walked into any session in a studio and when we're writing music and we're writing a song, we've never walked in and said, we're going to we're going to write this song because we think it's going to make us famous. Don't do yeah. it because of that. Go in there and write the song because you have something to say. And then you connect with people. 100 percent. And people yeah. aren't people are really, really intelligent and they're smart and they're they have a heart and they have a soul. And they're going to know if you're not being genuine. I think the sexiest thing right now in music is authenticity. I think the sexiest thing in just, yeah, in, hu in human nature is authenticity. Yeah. Just be uh, real, man. That's it. In, in, in summary, we'll, we'll give you your bullet points here. Move your body. Uh, only eat the hard-boiled egg if it's enclosed and it's prepackaged. Yeah. <laughs> authenticity over everything. Yeah. And uh, just be accepting of, of, of people around you, man. And plus, you know, Maybe some new music, maybe something involving Jelly Roll, plus, you know, Symptom of Being Human out, big shows over the summer. You never know. Well, maybe we'll, the One Direction reunion will happen with Shinedown. Who's to say? Who's to say, man? Who's to yeah, say? And just remember, and also, too, man, remember rock and roll is cool, dude. Um, rock and roll is a, uh, it's not necessarily a genre of music. Rock and roll is a way of life. I think it's amazing when I, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The year that N.W.A. was inducted, Ice Cube got on the mic and said, remember, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll is the spirit and we're honored yeah. to be here. So yeah. that's what I would say. Just remember that rock and roll is a way of life. Rock and roll is certainly a way of life. I'll leave you with this quick story. The first time I ever heard Shinedown or at least like fully saw someone embrace the Shinedown mentality. I was DJing a wedding several years ago and the bride and groom walked out to disturb down with the sickness who I saw you just caught up with by the way and then uh, their Love first dance. dance sound of madness first dance man that's just the energy it. yeah I we're not it. following tropes here there we go and I was yeah. like who's this Let's band go. what's the song this is great yeah you want to you I'm gonna tell you right now man you want to turn a wedding up play sound of madness you there you go turn it up uh, Sift of Being Human is a single out now. More music on the way. Shine Down has seven records for you to go back and just find your path, find your way, find your binge. Brent Smith, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Eric. I appreciate you, man.